Hi, this is Sergio with Arvig Tech Talk. Today, I'm going to show you how you can watch ESPN3 with Arvig on your laptop and how you can connect your laptop or computer to your TV so if you don't want to watch on that small little screen, you can blow it up to the big screen. So let's go ahead and do that. First of all, you want to go to arvig.com, that's easy enough, and you're going to go into the residential section. Because ESPN3 is a website, you only want to go into internet and look for the section called ESPN3. And then there's going to be a blue button that says watch ESPN3. That's going to bring you to the ESPN3 site powered by Arvig, which lets you do a lot, to, a lot of different things, but what we want to do most importantly is watch the channel. Real easy, you just click on the link and it's going to go ahead and stream the video. Now for this to work, you do need to have Flash Player on your computer, but most computers have that built in, so it's usually not a concern, but it'll warn you if you don't, and it'll just start playing. And today it looks like we're going to be watching some tennis matches and see what they're going on. Now this is great, but it's not um, perfect because maybe you, don't, you want to watch this on your TV. So next I'm going to show you how to connect your laptop to your TV, so if you don't want to watch it on the small screen, you can blow it up to the big screen. So every laptop connects to a TV differently. Uh, today I'm going to show you on mine, of course. This is, happens to be a Macintosh. So if we look on, on mine, we have a bunch of different ports over here. A lot you're probably pretty familiar with, you know, the USB and such. Mine has something called the Display Port, um, which I would plug a cord in from that, called the Display Cable, into my TV. Now, not everyone has a Macintosh computer, of course, though, so you have to know what kind of ports your computer has. The other two most common ports are called VGA and HDMI. If you have those cables, you'll know because the manual on your laptop will show them. Hopefully what you have, if your laptop's within the past well, two years or so, you'll have HDMI. You may have heard that term before for high definition TVs or really good uh, stereo systems. All of them use HDMI. If you're lucky enough to have HDMI, you just plug one end into the computer and one end into the TV and it'll handle the rest. You have to choose the input and it's all going to work. If you have VGA, that's on a lot of you know, older laptops, then it's a lot like connecting a projector if you've ever done that. You connect the cable to both ends, you turn your TV to the right channel, but then your laptop will have a button on it. It's usually one of the F keys that you'll press and then it'll put it on the screen. So the important thing to note is if you have VGA, press, you'll have to press a button on your laptop. If you have HDMI, it should automatically detect and just show up. Now I want to talk a little bit about safety on the computer, more specifically safe places on the internet. 99% of what people do today on computers is on the internet and the web, of course, but I know there's lots of you out there that are afraid about getting infections, viruses, you know, Trojans, all the nasty stuff that can happen. So I'm going to give you some tips and tricks on how to avoid those places, or if you come across them, what you should do. So let's go to take a look at the screen. So here we're on Arvig's site. We know, of course, that that's a safe website and we're not going to get infected from going there. But a lot of you and me included like to explore and go to different websites. So I'm going to use a popular search engine called Google. I'm sure most of you have heard of that, of course. If I'm searching for a topic, it's important to use a, a reputable search engine like Google or someone else. That way you know it's going to be safe. So let's say I'm looking up cats. I hit cat and I hit enter and I get a lot of results. Now because I know Google is safe and a good website, the results that come up are going to be safe or more likely to be safe than if I scroll down and as you can see there's lots of results. If I go over to page 8 or 9 or 10, you know, as I get deeper and deeper into the results, there's more of a chance that those websites could be infected. The other important thing to know when you're searching for websites is that, you, like I said, using a reputable search engine. The most famous ones are Google. Then there's Bing.com, which is powered by Microsoft. Another one is Yahoo, so we'll show you that one. And then one of the slightly less more popular ones, but used to be very big, was AskJeeves.com, or as they call it now, just Ask.com. Now, I'm not saying there's no other good search engines out there to help you find websites, but those are the most popular ones. The other thing I was going to tell you about is an antivirus, which you should have on your computer, hopefully. All computers should have an antivirus. If you do have one, any link you click on, whether on Google or Yahoo or whatever, when you click on it, that antivirus should warn you if that website is infected or not. If it is infected, go ahead and close out of the website and don't open it again. 
If you've already clicked on it and started browsing and it's too late, your antivirus has warned you, close out of it as soon as you can and instead just run a full scan with it and see if it finds anything. Hopefully that keeps you safe. If you have any questions, come to one of our RVIG locations or call 888-99-RVIG or check us out at RVIG.com.